my name is Jane Robbins. I'm with APP. Um, I'll, I'll try to hit this quickly. There's a lot. There are a lot of problems with Common Core, and I'll try to hit them quickly. The essential problem with it is that it embraces and exacerbates everything that has made public education bad for the last 40 to 50 years. And there is no reason to think that what has failed in the past will succeed in the future. First, Common Core increases the centralization and loss of local control that has damaged education. Um, Common Core takes the centralization problem one step further than just centralizing it in the federal government. It puts the, the control over the standards into the hands of unelected, unaccountable private interests in Washington, D.C. Common Core was not developed by the governors. It was developed under the auspices of the National Governors Association and the Council of Chief State School <coughs> Officers, but those are both organizations. They are private organizations, trade associations that have no grant of legislative authority from anyone to do anything. The state legislatures were cut out of this completely, so the people had no idea that this radical shift in education was happening. Now, where did the money come from for this? Primarily from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which has spent literally hundreds of millions of dollars developing and primarily marketing the Common Core standards. They have poured money, millions, into organizations to get them to sign on. The Chamber of Commerce, the National PTA, the National Teachers Unions, large private foundations such as Jeb Bush's Foundation for Excellence in Education, even the Iowa Department of Education, which has received almost $2 million from Gates. The list goes on and on, and one, um, uh, the president of, of the Fordham Institute, which is also Gates funded, said, it is not unfair to say that the Gates Foundation's agenda has become the country's agenda in education. We have a problem because the ranking members are not here, and we have an agreement we don't do subcommittee meetings when the uh, minority party is in the caucus. It's not fair for them. I remember when I was a freshman, they did that to me, and I already told you about it. Okay, I didn't know that they were that, in caucus. It's, it's not proper. Oh, okay. They're in caucus. Basically, we're going to waste the people's time. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying we have procedures where we need to be fair. I understand that, but I took time off of work to be here both this morning and now, and I think my legislators deserve to hear what I have to say. I, I understand that, ma'am, but the legislators aren't here. Are you a legislator? I am, but are you a legislator? There, are, there are three members of this party. I understand that, but you represent people, do you not? I well, do, but I'm not. Sandy, you want to violate the protocol, you may. I want to hear this too. But it's it's not fair to the ranking member that they're, they're not here. Well I would if I were the ranking member, I would I would make a formal complaint. And it would go to the speaker and the speaker would would have to tell you you are wrong. Okay, well, I don't know, Jason. I apologize for bringing this up, but we do have to follow the rules. Is, is there a, uh, is, just out of curiosity, is there a rule or at least some kind of decorum that a member who is on that committee and is placed on that committee by their leadership or by the processes of the House that they're supposed to be at meetings so that those meetings can take place? The rule is that when there is a caucus, the members are required to be at that caucus, and that caucus takes precedence over everything else. It takes, you cannot have a session. When you, now, you were both the member, members of both parties. Am I recalling this correct? You, you, Absolutely. you are representing Sandy may I suggest that uh, just uh, disband the uh, uh, subcommittee and uh, we'll listen to these people in front. We'll okay. stay and uh, that would be, listen to I would have no objection. And uh, those who don't want to stay can leave, but uh, we'll hear what they have to say. But I don't think we can really discuss the bill.
I would suggest that she be given a chance to finish. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This way you don't have to limit yourself to five minutes. Let's just. We have other meetings, Michelle, at one o'clock. Okay. Well, I don't got a list. That was either. So okay. you got to yeah. keep on. Yeah. Okay. All right. I will plow ahead. Okay. So who actually wrote these standards? A small group of hand-selected people who, of dubious qualifications, who welcomed the chance to write their elitist progressive education theories into national standards. Essentially, five people wrote the standards, and not one of whom was a K-12 teacher, and not one of whom was from Iowa. Um, the federal government then assumed the role of enforcer by offering massive amounts of stimulus money to the states that would adopt the national standards, that would sign on to the Align National Test, and that would build out massive student databases. Uh, so Iowa agreed to do all this. They signed on the dotted line before the standards were even, even released for only one reason, and that was to have a shot at the federal money, and Iowa did not even get that. Um, second, despite the insistence of Common Core proponents, these standards will inevitably drive curriculum because that is the point of standards. There's a report in my testimony that I will show you called The Road to a National Curriculum where it is laid out exactly how that happens. And the Smarter Balanced Assessment Consortium, of which Iowa is currently a member, is expressly spending federal taxpayer money on developing curricular frameworks. This is in direct violation of three federal statutes that prohibit the federal government from supervising, directing, or controlling curriculum. And it is disingenuous to say that the local, local schools will still sub, um, control their curriculum, especially in the age when companies such as Pearson control so much of the American textbook market. You're essentially reduced to choosing one Common Core aligned Pearson textbook over another Common Core aligned Pearson textbook, and that is hardly meaningful control of curriculum. Third, the Common Core mandates a type of teaching, essentially the old discredited outcome-based education, that has done nothing to enhance education and much to harm it. Under this model, academic knowledge is to be diminished. The idea seems to be if you want to know something, you can Google it. But much focus during school time is to be on these fuzzy 21st century skills, such as um, vague concepts, collaboration, communication, leadership. By devoting so much time not to instilling knowledge, but rather to cultivating these government-approved habits of mind, Common Core enforces mediocrity. Um, but it will be across the board mediocrity, so it won't be obvious to the, to the um, casual observer. And this is one way to um, make the education system look better, but it's probably not the way that most Iowa parents would prefer. Fourth, the Common Core math standards are designed to prepare students only for non-selective community colleges, not selective universities. Jason Zimba, who's one of the three men who wrote the math standards, admitted at a meeting in Massachusetts in 2010 that these standards are not designed to prepare students for STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math studies. Um, and they don't do that because, number one, they place the Algebra I course in ninth grade in high school, not in seventh or eighth grade as our international competitors do, such as Singapore and Taiwan. This means that a student who is on the regular Common Core track, and most of them will be, will not be able to get to calculus by senior year of college. The second reason, uh, excuse, by senior year of high school. The second reason the math standards shortchange college-bound students is that the standards stop with Algebra II. There is little trigonometry, no pre-calculus, and no calculus in the standards. And federal statistics show that less than 40% of students who stop with Algebra II in high school ever go on to earn a bachelor's degree. Even if there is an accelerated track, which a lot of state departments of education say they're going to do, that track will, as a practical matter, be available to the students who have academic parents at home who can help them or whose parents can afford tutoring. What will that do to the achievement gap? Um, Jason Zimba also said last summer, if you want to take calculus your freshman year in college, you will need to take more mathematics than is in the Common Core. And the college board um, uh, vice president who's in charge of AP Calculus course said that course will probably go away because it's in conflict with the Common Core. In other words, Common Core does not get students that far. Um, okay, the, in fifth, in the early grades, Common Core <coughs> math recycles the discredited fuzzy math approaches of decades ago. They delay the teaching of the standard algorithms, the way we all learned math, um, in favor of requiring young students to learn cumbersome and confusing alternative approaches. This allows the Common Core creators to claim they're engendering deeper learning or higher order thinking 
In fact, they're simply resurrecting failed progressive strategies that have never worked anywhere. And in fact, these strategies of using alternative approaches and explaining your answers rather than actually working math problems are exactly the opposite of what the high-performing countries do. Six, because Common Core is a workforce development model rather than an education model, it is part of a broader scheme to mandate collection and sharing of massive amounts of personal data on students so that they can be tracked into the workforce. The federal government suggests collecting over 400 data points on each child. We don't know how much Smarter Balance will demand because that test is not out yet and they haven't told us what it's going to be. But Smarter Balance has a cooperative agreement with the Department of Education, the U.S. Department of Education, under which Smarter Balance is required to allow the U.S. Department ongoing access to student-level data. So anything that goes to Smarter Balance from Iowa, you lose control over, it will go to the federal government, which is disturbing because the federal government has gutted federal privacy law. And now there is very, very little to keep the federal government from sharing that data with anyone that they want to. The only thing they have to do is use the right words. Parents will not have the opportunity to object. Instead, they won't even know the disclosure is happening. So, ladies and gentlemen, here is where we are. In an effort to get federal money, Iowa adopted a set of school standards that it cannot change in any meaningful way, that have no research bases, that are not internationally benchmarked, and that have never been piloted anywhere. They are faith-based standards. We're supposed to have faith that they will work miracles in Iowa education. How they will do that, given that they recycle the failed fads of the past, is not clear. Look at the track record of people behind this. The nonprofit Achieve, Inc., which helped write the standards, is primarily known for its American Diploma Project, a failure. The federal government is primarily known for the U.S. Department of Education, for America 2000, Goals 2000, No Child Left Behind, all failures. The uh, Gates Foundation invested heavily in something called the Small Schools Initiative. It's a failure. NGA and CCSSO can point to not one successful education initiative in their history, and now we are supposed to believe that this time these people have it right. Well, Michael Cohen, who is the head of Achieve, said in testimony in New York a few months ago, the full effects of the Common Core won't be seen until an entire cohort of students from kindergarten through high school graduation has been effectively exposed to Common Core teaching. So that's 13 years. We're supposed to do this experiment on our children for 13 years, and then we'll decide whether it worked or whether it didn't. Um, we urge Iowa to be a leader in stepping back from the brink on this. Any necessary revisions of Iowa standards can be done by Iowa uh, educators, answerable to Iowa parents and taxpayers. Your children deserve so much better than Common Core. <laughs>